Here's another verse you can just jot down. Isaiah 26, verse 3, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in you. What is the spiritual course to pass? Well, if a young person can say this, while I lived at home, I learned to enter into my family's devotional life. I learned to treat Bible reading and prayer with respect. I learned to do my part to help others in the family enjoy God's Word. That's why in our family we sit around and at one meal a day, when Dad's home, we read our Bibles together five out of seven days a week. You know, there's, I never like to try and do it 100% because my life is never 100%. It's never so, so stable that I can do exactly the same thing every day. So I figure five out of seven is wonderful. And you might figure four out of seven or six out of seven or maybe you're a perfectionist, seven out of seven. But we read the Bible five days out of seven out loud in a circle around the family and I encourage the whole time them to participate from 2 to 16 to 45 to be a part, to stir themselves up, and not, not to, to allow their spiritual problems or their, their bad attitude to throw a glass of cold water on the fire. You encourage that. You just stop and say, wait a minute, are you paying attention? Are you with us here? Are you listening? Do you know what we're talking about? Do you know why we're talking about that? I don't mean haul out the stick and bop them. I used to pull weeds for this mean ogre. I mean, no, it was the neighbor lady. When I was about six years old, my mom sold my services to pull weeds, and that lady would sit on her little, her little stool like this, and she had a yardstick, and she'd go, not that one, and hit me with the yardstick. That, every time, I, I think that's how some people parent. <coughs> hit them with the yardstick, instead of getting down and showing them which ones to pull and which ones to leave, you know? growing this. Here's the next one. Turn to Psalm 15.4. By the way, all these are going to be to the right. And uh, the first one is the one that's most important. Psalm 15.4. The first one growing this is Deuteronomy 4.29. And that is uh, learning that, that uh, personal spiritual walk. But the second verse is Psalm 15.4. And I call that trustworthiness. Before my children leave home, I want to see a growingness in them. I want to see a growing hunger for God. Now, I can't make it, but I can do everything I can to start that, and then they have to choose to agree and walk with God. And maybe they won't. But my whole heart and focus is not to wad up the paper once, but to do it. Secondly, trustworthiness. Here's Psalm 15.4. It says that a godly, by the way, Psalm 15 is the Proverbs 31 for men. Did you ever know that? It's amazing. Psalm 15 and Psalm 24 talk about what a godly man looks like. And Psalm 15 says, A godly man in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. That's a trustworthiness. Now, let me give you an example. You, as a young person, parent, you notice that they say, yes, Mr. Smith. Yes, I will help you on Saturday. You know, he wants them to mow their lawn or whatever. And so you say, Mr. Smith, I'll help you. And all of a sudden, after you've agreed with Mr. Smith at 9 o'clock to go to his house and mow his lawn, someone comes and says, I have four box seat tickets. <laughs> and... You know, we have a meal and everything, and you can come and sit at the game in an air-conditioned box in July, and it'll be wonderful. And you know, trustworthy persons, look what it says in Psalm 15:4. They swear to their own hurt. That means if they agree to do something, they do it even if they get a better deal. You know why most young people never learn trustworthiness? Because their parents aren't that trustworthy. I mean, the parents say, yes, we'll help you with that. And the kids notice that all of a sudden a better deal comes along. That's forgotten and they go on. And how many times have we not cultivated a trustworthiness? And here's the, the spiritual course that a young person should have. When I lived at home, I learned to come home at the time we agreed on. And if something happens to stop me, I learned I'll call and explain and ask your guidance. That's what a trustworthy person does. You know what one of the greatest joys of my heart is? When our oldest calls 15 minutes before he's supposed to be home and says, you know what, I'm not quite sure I'll be home right at that time, but we are headed home, but you know, they're you know, dropping too many people off or whatever. You know what that is? That's an internal concern that you can see. 
that means they're worthy of your trust. This is how Jesus put it in the New Testament in Matthew 5, 37. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more than this is from the evil one, Matthew 5, 37. You know what? As parents, it ought to be if we say yes, we will, or no, we won't, we do that unless we explain something else has come up and, and we understand that, that we have still fulfilled our obligation as much as possible. We've sworn to our own hurt. And then we cultivate that trustworthy attitude in our children's lives. Before they graduate home, have you seen them start growing? Have you seen them worthy of trust?